In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and start playing around with Google's Gemini CLI. It's an alternative coding agent that lives directly in your terminal, and it allows you to use their latest LLMs like Gemini 2.5 Pro and Flash to edit files, code web apps, and games directly in your terminal. And while Google's been underwhelming in a lot of their releases, I've got to say that this is one of the best releases so far. I've been playing around with this for the last day, building a landing page like this. I also built this Space Invaders game that has Elon Musk's face. Before we jump into the demos, what is Gemini CLI? So similar to OpenAI's Codex and Claude Code, Gemini has followed suit by creating this terminal-based coding assistant. And this is gonna allow you to get 2.5 Pro and Flash usage directly in your terminal. So just for reference, Claude Code is about $20 a month for light coding work. And then with OpenAI's Codex, you're gonna have the GPT model pricing out of the box, so there is no free tier. But what's absolutely insane is that Google is offering 60 model requests per minute, a thousand requests per day, and this is all free of charge. So Google's basically made a very strategic signal that, hey, we're gonna throw a bunch of money at this because we want devs to flock to Gemini CLI. So what sets Gemini CLI apart from the other coding tools is the 1 million context window that allows it to understand and work in larger code bases a lot easier compared to uh, the GPT models and Claude Sonnet. Just like in this demo, you can also use MCPs that allow you to interact with VO, uh, Google's uh, video generation tool, and it'll allow you to interface directly with that tool to create videos just like this. We won't cover that in this video, but let me know if you want me to make that video. So to get set up with Gemini CLI, just go to their repository. So to run this, we'll just check if we have Node installed and we have 22, and then we'll paste in the command that they had there. All right, so for the first test, I asked it to create this landing page. So let's see how I built this using Gemini CLI. So after you log into the CLI, I just asked it to create me a landing page for my AI agency website using modern styles, a Next.js app, and to have some sort of a glowing UI to make it look a little bit more futuristic. So you can see here on the bottom right that as you go along, it the context drops down from 100%. And then you can see all the terminal outputs. So if we just pause this video, all that green text is the Gemini CLI uh, adding text to your files. And then the red is it deleting. So it's deleting some of the boilerplate code from Next.js. So it's gonna automatically run these uh, shell commands. So CD just means change directory, read file. It's gonna start reading this page.tsx before it starts editing that file. And then it tells us that we can uh, CD into the AI agency landing folder and run npm run dev. Then it, uh, I asked it to run the dev server, which it wasn't actually able to do. Um, so then I actually uh, had to run this myself in a separate cursor window. So I, uh, even though it said my local host was running, it wasn't actually running. So I had to go into the folder myself, open up a terminal window and run uh, the server command there. And this is the first iteration, just one prompt, um, maybe 30 seconds to create this landing page. So not a bad start, but definitely not the best design. So I went back into my, uh, my terminal for Gemini and just told it to make it more modern, make it black and green, less generic, more modern, and to take more inspo from Airbnb and Apple. So that's a, that's a pro prompting technique if you want better designs, which everybody seems to be using now. But um, yeah, just uh, it kept trying to kill these development servers. So you can, uh, if you see these commands that it tries using over and over again, you can also edit your gemini.md file, which I'll show you a little bit later. Okay, we can see here it starts deleting uh, these edits in red and adding sections in green with the plus signs and then the gray is the stuff that's untouched. So let's go back here. And so it's gonna try to restart the server. 
and there's our second iteration so still better and um, I would say that that's like not bad at all for two prompts but still looking very generic um, still very simple um, so now I'm going to ask it to extend the rest of the landing page and to self-analyze where it can make it better and to add more pulsing animations. So you can see here that it starts adding a bunch of keyframes and animation pulses in the CSS files. It's going to try to npm run dev and restart the server again, which uh, it's going to fail at over and over again. But then after that, all that's done, it's going to read the files, add the carousel here so that the uh, testimonials have some animation to them. And then we'll go back and check the three prompt landing page site. So there you go. You can see that the, the button is glowing, the text is glowing, and all of these cards are glowing. Okay. And then here we have the client testimonials, which I asked it to make a carousel for. And there you go, the, the carousel is working. And yeah, a bunch of glowing, glowing uh, UI. So overall, landing page looked pretty good after just three prompts. So obviously this is not the best design, but in terms of like complexity with CSS animations, that's looking really good. All right, in this next demo, I'm gonna create a Space Invaders game. So in the same context uh, chat, so I still had 98% left after maybe three or four prompts. So multiply that by um, 50, what is that? So maybe like 200 prompts in a chat before you have to control C and reset it. Um, so I'm just gonna ask it to create a new folder uh, and I'm gonna ask it to create a Space Invader game and to create any clarification questions if needed. And so it asked me a bunch of questions on how I want the game to look. Um, it recommended HTML, CSS, and JavaScript just to run in an HTML file. And then I just told it to uh, keep it simple, um, just something that we can get running as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, this is just one step you can take before going off, just so you can keep your uh, prompt simple. So you can see there it starts with the CSS file. It's going to start creating the background um, as well as the Space Invaders UI. And there you go, like one prompt. Um, uh, how long in total did that take? That took about, in total, not even another percentage of context to create the start to this Space Invaders game. You can see here that uh, I'm able to start shooting around and get a really basic UI here. And so I was incredibly impressed with like one prompt to get the Space Invaders game running. So obviously we had to uh, make it a little bit better. So I just told it to make it 10 times more awesome because uh, I knew that it looked pretty basic and plain and then it uh, went off. So you can see here, it's gonna start adding overlays, a game loop. It's gonna start adding way more files and updating our index.html. So you can see here that it kind of went crazy and started firing bullets like crazy to us. So I guess that's what I get for saying uh, 10 times more awesome. But uh, yeah, going back to the prompt, I said that it was shooting too fast and then I wanted it to shoot poop emojis at me. And I also asked it for a pause button. And so you can see there it's thinking and then it's gonna start creating and editing those files. It edits the emoji size and it changes the emoji to the poop emoji. And then it's gonna start slowing down the bullet size and adding this pause button to our file. All right, and so we've got poop raining down on us extremely fast and still way too fast that I cannot uh, dodge these, these poop bullets. And so the pause button is working and let's revise this to make it even better. Okay, so I actually revised it by telling it that it's uh, shooting way too fast. I told it to put Elon Musk's face on it and imagine that we're going to Mars. And I told it to make it more bold and just overall more awesome. So we can see here that it's thinking for a second and it's planning out how it's gonna do all of those changes that I mentioned. 
and then starts writing files to edit and slow down the bullet uh, frames. And then it's going to try to make our vehicle more awesome by including Elon Musk's face. However, it didn't really add his face, it just added some emojis here. And I was actually expecting it to do a web search as it does have the access to Google, Google's web search features. Um, but yeah, the poops definitely slowed down here. And this is still, mind you, only like four prompts in and we have this fully functional game. Um, so definitely, definitely really good. Um, just a matter of how many prompts you wanna get to uh, reach something that you like. And so then I asked to make it more scary, said they look lame. And then I asked it to download images of Elon Musk's face to put on the ship. And here's where it started to break down. Um, so still like the very first version of this, but uh, I had to grab Elon Musk's face myself and put it into the folders that it mentioned. I also grabbed an image of Mars. And then I told Gemini that I put the images in the folder that I mentioned. And then I told it to actually find and add those images itself since I didn't use the exact same image paths that it mentioned. And there you go, it, uh, it couldn't find the images still so I had to reprompt it and ask it to fix it again. And then it, finally it found the actual image names to the files that I placed in the folder. And then we were able to get Elon Musk's face there and the Mars background in the back. And you can see it updated the Space Invader faces just using like CSS and geometry. And uh, yeah, the, the game was running really smoothly. I was able to uh, play the game to till the very end. The poop wasn't uh, flying too fast at me. And I was pretty impressed with this. This was like six or eight prompts, I think. And um, I was able to add a pause button. I was able to create the full gameplay. And I was really impressed by this. <laughs> okay, and the last thing that we'll mention is that Every single time you're adding a chat, um, you're gonna start reducing this context down. So you start with 100% at this very start of a chat. And if you hit Control C twice, you'll actually reset the context. And so when I hit Control C twice there, it's gonna power down the agent. It's gonna tell you how many turns or chats you had. And so here's the no total number of input tokens and output tokens that were used, as well as those thought tokens. So every single time at the beginning of a chat when it's thinking through how it's gonna execute my prompt. Um, you can see here the total amount of tokens it used. So it's just a cumulative amount of the input, output, and thoughts tokens, the total duration that you use the API, and the total duration for the wall. I'm not sure what that means, but I think that's your cumulative total through all of your chats. And yeah, I haven't even ran a single dollar on using the Gemini CLI for these two projects, mini projects that I made uh, for creating a small landing site as well as this uh, Space Invaders game. And if you're interested in building your first full stack web app using Next.js and Supabase, using 100% LLM generated code using cursor, then make sure to check out the link in the description where you can check out some free previews to the videos as well as get an exclusive discount code to the course.